Hey everyone, in this week's episode of Love is a Business Strategy, we talk with Ivan and Olga, co-founders of youtravel.me. You'll learn how after one really bad travel experience, they realized something key. Crafting an entirely new approach to travel takes empathy. We're very excited about this episode because we break down how they built this incredible new travel site and how it's bringing people together through one common element, a love of exploration. I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Love is a Business Strategy. This is a podcast that brings humanity to the workplace. As you know, we're here to talk about business, but we want to tackle topics that most business leaders shy away from. We believe that humanity and love should be at the center of every successful business. I'm your host, Jeff Ma. Just kidding. Again, I'm Frank Dana. Most of you are used to Jeff. I'm a director at Softway and Softway is a business to employee solutions company that creates products and offers services that help build resilience and high performance company cultures. We've got a big crew today. We've got Muhammad, who you all know and love. We've got Chris, who also you know and love. And then we've got two new friends, Olga and Ivan. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hey guys, thanks for having us. So first I'd like to introduce Olga, Olga Bortkanova, Bortnikova, is that right? Olga Bortnikova. <laughs> Try one I knew, see, I knew I was going to mess it up. And we can cut that. You ready, Maggie? I'm going to say it again. Ready? Here we go. We're going to start from here because I'm not messing that up in the in the actual podcast. So first, I'd like to introduce Olga Bortnikova, the CEO and co-founder of YouTravel.me. Olga is the ex-CEO of an event management company and managed over a thousand events, which I cannot even fathom, with a team of 30. Olga, you visited 39 countries. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And in 2018, together with two other founders, one of those is here with us today, you launched a tech travel startup, youtravel.me. So Olga, welcome. Hi, Frank. Ivan. Hi, guys. Hello, Ivan Bortnikov. You're the CMO and co-founder with six years in B2B sales at international companies like AB, InBev, and Chapita. And you used to scale sales with the biggest retailers. You also boast five years in digital marketing, and you are just one country away, one country behind Olga, a not too shabby 38 countries visited. When we talked about this in the pre-show, it sounded like there was a little bit of a competition here. We're going to have to unpack that in a little while. But now I want to talk about youtravel.me. So launched in Europe in 2018, just a few years ago, youtravel.me is an algorithm-powered online marketplace for booking multi-day small group adventure travel organized by travel experts. From yoga retreats all the way to massive safaris, it's a global community of over 10,000 happy travelers and 3,900 travel experts offering 14,000 tours in 130 countries around the world. Those are a lot of numbers and I love it all. And welcome to the welcome to the show. It's really awesome to have you here. Uh, YouTravel.me, it sounds like an amazing tool, an amazing product, an amazing company, and we're gonna jump into that in a moment. So Ivan, Olga, welcome. I've got an icebreaker for us. Um, and the first question I want to ask, and it's the same question for everybody, but we do this in our podcast just to get to know everybody a little bit. It's a simple one though, hopefully hopefully simple. Chris, I'm going to start with you. What's the next place you are planning to travel? The next place um, I am, I would like to travel. I have no plans to travel, but the next place that I would like to travel is London, England. Mm-hmm. Muhammad, your facial expression there. For, for people that aren't listening, imagine Muhammad making a grimace face like he tasted a durian in Singapore. He's just like, no, nah. <laughs> no, that's the not, face he made. I, I, it's not that I don't like London or anything. It's like he's been there so many times. Why would he just want to keep going back there again? That's it's, all. Because I it's, love it's, it. It's home. It's home. <laughs> Muhammad, let's let's go there. Let's go there. What's the place you are planning to travel next? Turkey. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have great. a direct flight from Houston to Istanbul. And wow. I hear the food is really good out there and a lot to see and a lot to do. So Turkey is where I'm uh, planning to go. And maybe I'm biased because I hear Russian people love Turkey. So I'm going to go. I think my yeah. wife is influencing me. <laughs> <laughs> Turkish delights, my man. Turkish delights. Um, yes. Olga, where, where are you planning next to travel? Oh, it's a difficult question, but I think uh, we, I, tr I plan travel to Hawaii. 
Uh, this is not a country. <laughs> I'm in the USA already, but I think uh, yeah, it's pretty much a destination I want to visit next. Got it. All right, Ivan. Now, no reaction. Now, now I have to say the same destination, actually, <laughs> <laughs> or we need to rediscuss it. But as you know, I have this uh, number of countries chase, so I definitely need to visit one more country to. And now it's my it's my chance, actually. When she goes to Hawaii, I can, I need to go to some other state. So uh, I would go to uh, Bolivia uh, and Chile. And the reason is that the Uyuni uh, Lake, which is there, is what I really dream of visited. And one of the first uh, gr small groups that actually traveled using you travel, like in back in 2018, went exactly there. So now it's my time to to chase these guys also uh, who used our platform. So definitely Bolivia should be the next place. That's amazing. So, Olga, just so you know, Hawaii is Muhammad's favorite place. Like yes. that's his happy place. If London is Chris's happy mm. place, Hawaii is Muhammad's happy place. Totally. I Hawaii is beautiful and you will love it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, it's, cool. it's actually it's actually really nice too. We've just been Istanbul. there in March. Yeah, it's oh, wow. so so yeah, we've just been there like three months ago. Oh. Yeah, but if Ivan says that uh, he will go to uh, uh, Chile or B Bolivia, I will go to Mexico because it will be one more country for me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this, this is it. This is it. They're, they're racking up points. Like, they're points on the scoreboard. But, and but, but, but uh, Olga, you may actually have to go to Mexico and another place to one-up on Ivan. Because see, he's yeah. trying to go to two places to one-up on you. So. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just want to go to the beach. That's my next thing is South Padre in Texas. It's not It's not as crazy as Istanbul, but it's close. Um. So thank you all very much for, for jumping in and like giving us insight into your into your battle between how many people are visiting the most countries. So I want to start us off by asking how this idea came about to to create this this tool, uh, this product that so many people have used around the world now. How uh, what was the impetus around you travel me? Yeah, let me share uh, our story about that. So back in 2018, when we were actually working in totally different areas. So as you've mentioned, I've been working uh, retail and Olga, she was working in event management, but we were already traveling actively by that time visited, I would say, sorry, countries approximately. And uh, we have always been planning our trips uh, actively and spent so much time on travel preparation. But once uh, in November, I mean, I remember that clearly that in November 2017, we didn't have time to plan our next vacation. So we were just like in the middle of November and understanding that we don't have a place to go in on the new year and uh, nothing is booked and the prices are already high. So for the first time in our lives, we did not uh, go ourselves, but we have booked at tour package with a big tour operator back then we were living in moscow russia so uh for the first time we we bought a package with a tour operator to china and uh we went there for a new year um holidays and it was the worst ever trip in our lives that we ever had because i mean it was so awful we i mean nothing was really organized well we had a hotel which was i think 100 or more kilometers from the closest city and it was so i mean we don't, didn't have any itinerary planned by the by the operator and the guide he tried to really exchange uh dollars for uh chinese currency with some crazy um exchange rate and he was so boring i mean the big bus of 50 people and uh, so all the most touristic places and like the how to say the so i mean it was awful we didn't like it at all and back then we came back and we just understood at the same time our friends started to ask us to ask us like guys you've been to iceland uh 
a little bit earlier. Can you share like your itinerary? Can you share the places? So some friends have started to ask us and we were we just decided that we need to uh, help people uh, who face the same situation like we had when we did not have time and travel preparation and we didn't know what to do, but still we don't want to have a boring vacations. And we really want to deep dive in the country's culture and understand it well and so on. So that's how the idea of you travel came up. We understood that we don't know such a platform or such a company that can help with that. Uh, and that's how we created it. First of all, the idea was a little bit different because we were thinking about a platform to share itineraries uh, between uh, independent travelers. But then we just found out that small group trips uh, exist, that they are organized by independent guides, and they that I, they are so different from the two packages we had but nobody knows about them. I mean, they are so, I mean, they are just starting uh, to grow and nobody still knows that a lot of cool guys are uh, creating expert plan trips. So we understood that we need to create a platform to help people find these independent guides, these professional travelers and join them in their unusual tours around the globe. So that's how we created it back in 2018 originally. Yeah. Wow. So it was out yeah. of pure anger. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just pain, pain. Just <laughs> frustration. But you know, at that but you said up up until that point in time, you had traveled to 30 different places around the world, right? Mm -hmm. Different countries. Mm -hmm. And so you had where where did the passion for for travel and for building those itineraries come from? Like what what was kind of the impetus for traveling so much in the first place? Yeah, I think that so traveling is one of the biggest impressions that people can get in their lives because mm. every trip I have, it blows my mind. It broadens my mindset. And that's why people, um, they, I, I believe they travel because they want to challenge themselves. They want to change their vision on how the world is built. So that's why I think we have always loved it uh because we don't want to be bored in the same place all the time long all there the time go. so so yeah this, Chris, this is the reason why we started to travel oh huh? sorry chris is that you don't want to be bored with the same place okay mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not is london boring yeah. yeah it's like there's so many things to do in and around london like you can't get bored and for those who might be listening from london i don't want you to think anything of the comment that was just made uh, your city is beautiful and it is not boring whatsoever. You should be proud. You should be proud. Love Chris. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, and we uh we are from uh, Novosibirsk, it's middle of Siberia, it's middle of nowhere. When we start of what uh, our travel history, uh we uh didn't know about the world uh, enough and uh, we just okay, we will go to Europe. To which country? And never mind to europe and uh, we just start and then we uh try to uh, um see different uh, worlds different people and we understood that really the world is totally different and we, when we understood that people spend time and money when they go to package tours and they spend this uh, money and time to uh, that that don't give them goosebumps we understood that why why do you spend this time it's it's don't give you value and uh yeah we understood that okay we will need, ch need to change this world it's <laughs> something mistake here yeah no for sure i know for me you know while i want to go next to london my <laughs> biggest sort of trip that i would love to do is a safari in africa mm, but yeah. i so i should just tell you and my listeners will probably already know this but I just can't like 
go. I want to like have the upgraded experience when I go, like <laughs> glamping and you know really nice food and you know oh, a, a nice hotel. Like I I want it all, right? And I still want to sort of see you know the loving animals up close. I, I heard they're really nice, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really want to just like go and experience like that. And I've had friends who you know are from Africa and they're like when you go I will tell you where to go and what trips to book and what places to go because all safaris are not created equal and it sounds like you travel.me has has sort of the inside scoop on some of these types of uh foreign um sort of uh, attractions that you know people who are not in those parts of the world wouldn't naturally understand or wouldn't know to think about or wouldn't know to ask or understand so I think that's really cool that you guys are really surfacing some of that insight and that knowledge in a platform that allows people to be a, a, a more informed traveler. Because you're right, Olga, when it comes to value, it doesn't make sense to invest your time, money, effort, and you go someplace and you you come back with nothing. Mm -hmm. No memories, no learnings, no, no fun, <laughs> nothing. Um, and I just see travel as, you know, when we think about love as a business strategy, travel is sometimes the best way to quickly understand how to love another, how to love another country, another culture, right? And, you know, they say that the best way to test a relationship is to travel with somebody, <laughs> right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's, yeah, that's true. That's true. I found, they found that to be true. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, I, I was, uh, looking around at some of your your the content on your site and just I was honestly looking at different tours I could take in uh, Yellowstone. But one of your values is something that I think aligns very well with our approach as an organization and our approach around humanity and bringing humanity to the workplace. And it's, it's called human approach. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that value in particular, because you talk about embracing difference, about inspiring each other and allowing everyone to achieve results. And you mentioned something in that value that's really interesting to me, and it says it's very difficult to find really good friends in adulthood. So going through yeah. new experiences and emotions together, people become truly close friends. So why was that an important element to add to your values as an organization? And how does that play out in the, the tours that people are able to take, but also how you run your company? So what we realized uh, from the very beginning when we started to talk to our users and to our customers that the biggest pain point is that they love some travel style or they want, I mean, the dream of visiting Turkey, but nobody uh, from there, like friends or family really wants to go there or they love mountains they love hiking but i mean their wife she she's a uh like beach style hotel and so so on so he doesn't have uh, the person doesn't have like-minded people to join them in their next adventure so it and it all started from our users so that's why we realized that people uh, i mean when we were students when we were young uh and nobody had the how to say the travel experience. I mean, my, my friend just uh, offered me to go to Spain and I'm more than ready to go because we have the same income. We didn't, I mean, most probably we have not visited any country at the moment. So I'm totally ready to go. But when you grow, uh, when you become older, uh, you have already different countries visited and it's more and more difficult to find a person who has exactly the same match. So, uh, and that all came from our users. Uh, we really understood that. And, and, and later, when our first customers, they started to come back from their trips and we uh, started to read the reviews, we understood that people say like, I met these people and I'm sure we will travel again. We will become uh, friends forever. And we understood that this magic of small groups, when it's not a big bus uh, of uh, 50 people and you cannot really make a connection with with most of them. But when you travel in a small group in five days or in one week, you get to know each person. You understand that you have the same passion, uh, same love to uh, to whatever is there you have. And you continue 
uh, becoming, I mean, you become friends and lots of our customers and travel experts continue, I mean, uh, continue travel together uh, because they just share this passion. Um, so that's how, how it has um, started that we, we understood that this is a very important part that we need to focus and uh, improve our algorithm uh, to match people better based on their values and interests. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and uh, true friendship uh, is born from adventure, and uh, adventure is a travel. And when you just go through some exercises and activities together, you really uh, know each other better, and you feel uh, safe with this person in different um, episodes of your life. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. a lot like vulnerable-based trust, like what we talk about and some yeah. of the things that we do. Like when you have that experience and you're in a foreign place, nobody knows anybody, right? Like the only thing you have is vulnerability, right? Um, you're completely exposed. You, you don't speak the local language. You, you don't know where to go or, you know, um, where not to go even. Um, and so I think that that's a, a definite um, experience that uh, we've seen as well, create bonds that last and, and, and allow for even the most difficult of times to be not so bad. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I... I think in 2019, like the, you know, Jeff is missing, but the four of us had the opportunity to travel to almost 11 countries together wow. all in 2019. And we were, we were outside of United States for 110 days out of the year. We were traveling together uh, for work and business, but we also had a lot of fun. But I would say that that forged a relationship between each other that allowed us to you know, co-author a book together called Love as a Business Strategy, I would, I would have to agree that uh, the travels that we had together probably is what forged those strong relationships and alignment and understanding. Although I think uh, we didn't really have a choice in which places we went together, it still <laughs> did create that bond. Yeah. And I do remember Chris was very, very focused on crafting his <laughs> elevated experience anywhere that we went. He would, he, the first thing we would talk about is how many restaurants have Michelin stars? You know, if that, if that gives you, if that gives you a perspective, Olga's like, okay, well, you know, but I will say this, it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, like Chris knows people rode on the coattails is what I will say. They All I know it. is anytime we had to pick hotels, we're like, Chris, which hotel should we stay in? <laughs> he brings the best hotel options for us to stay <laughs> Uh, you know, you only live once is my philosophy. So, you know, when it comes to problems, if you have it, throw money at them, you know, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> uh, oh no, it's, for, for me, travel is definitely one of those things that as you guys started out with, it changes perspective. It allows you to see a different slice of humanity, a different slice of decision making, a different slice of loving and how love is expressed in, in different places. Um, but it also gives you the chance to taste what the world, you know, is made of, right? And, you know, I hate going places and everybody only goes to the restaurants that are familiar to their hometowns or home countries, right? And I'm like, no, you got to go out and taste the flavor of the local food, as long as it doesn't have cilantro. I don't like cilantro, so that's not what I'm trying to taste. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, getting out and, and sort of experiencing the world um, in that particular location is sometimes the most rewarding, even though it's scary, um, you know, and I'll be honest, having gone to places like Sydney, Australia, yes, they speak English, but it's not always like <laughs> American English. So it's like, it's still, <laughs> like, what did they say? <laughs> like, sunnies, what are sunnies? Like, oh, sunglasses, oh, you're talking about sunglasses. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> you know, you're still in this uh, foreign atmosphere, but you're experiencing, you know, just a different way of life, even though quote unquote, it's Western, it's still like extremely different. Practices and customs are very different. Um, the way that people engage and talk very different, right? Not just the accent, but just the way that they, you know, embrace difference. So it's just really interesting to see and observe as someone who like <laughs> is very observant and you know a natural people watcher. I'm not a stalker, but a, a people watcher. But um, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris is like, let me explain. Let me explain. Yeah. I just uh, I like to provide clarity for our listeners and viewers who might not know. <laughs> when I say people watch, I don't mean stalking. Chris's um, listeners. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I did I did actually want to ask a little bit, uh, Olga, um, and and Ivan. I wanted to see if you know 
2020 was a, was a very challenging year. It had to, you know, I mean, especially for travel. Um, but now we're getting back into 2021 and we've, and we've, we've come out of, you know, hopefully this, this, this moment in time where we're kind of getting to the place where we can sort of say post pandemic, which is nice, but I'm wondering what trends are you seeing in travel? Like what are people choosing to do or thinking about doing that you've noticed that may have changed in terms of how people may have been adapting or adjusting based on the pandemic and some of those things. I personally to know what you're seeing in regards to how people are starting to act and live differently. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And we, we see a lot of changes uh, in 2021 versus uh, the pre-pandemic times. So uh, first of all, we see a big trend for like working style trips that are becoming more and more popular on our platform because lots of co-working. people co-working, yeah, co-living, okay. co-working. I mean, the trips for digital nomads and during this pandemic, uh, it's, so, it's so many dig- new digital nomads uh, in the world and a lot of People, they don't return in their offices even after the pandemic. And a lot of companies just understood all the and all the <clears throat> good things about the remote work. So that's why um, uh, people still want to travel, but sometimes they don't, need, they don't need to do it as quick as they were doing it before, like for one week and then back to the office. So definitely this style of tours is is booming at the moment on our platform. Mm. Um, so s- secondly, I, I would say that the, what I really actually love, why I mean, why I really love what we are doing is that the um, trips that are connected with some passions of people are also becoming more popular. Um, for example, the yoga retreats, uh, tours for photographers, and like, I don't know, kite surfing. So a lot of communities has appeared during the pandemic. People started to, uh, because they had lack of um, communicating with people, they started to uh, to become part of new communities and to build new communities. And now all these communities are starting to travel together based mm. on their interests. So that's why we see a big trend also in this um, thematic tours, uh, which are built around people's passions, like like the ones I've mentioned. I mean, we have tours for uh, artists, uh, we have tours for photographers and so on, and this, this is becoming more and more popular. And yeah, I think also the refund policy uh, in traveling has changed a lot. It's now more flexible. Uh, and while before all the airlines, for example, they did not, I mean, it was really difficult to get refund. Now, I mean, the more flexible policies of the companies um, are, I, I think they will stay. And the companies and the t- tourists and travelers, they have adapted. Uh, to this new flexible style of uh, travel preparation, which is cool. Wow. I mean, people yeah. are now, people, yeah, the traveling world can become more flexible. That's awesome. Olga, I want to ask you about these work-related tours and and mm-hmm. co-working in regards to colleagues going on tours together. Uh, what are you noticing yeah. around those? What are, what are people doing? I'm interested to know what Chris, Muhammad, and I and the rest of Softway can do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's like a more like team building uh, mm. for travel, travel uh, with your friends or with uh, co-workers, uh, and uh, you find some new uh, new friends. You spend time together like a normal uh, small group tours. You have some adventures. Uh, you go hiking uh, or something else. But at the same time, you talk with people, communicate, and you understand uh, this. You know, uh, um, you talk with people and you understand them uh, more deeply than you can do this uh, through Zoom or through some office uh, when you just work near. And uh, that's why I see the these trends uh, as, uh, you know, this bubble style travel because people like uh, travel for one week in one bubble. They just spend time with each other and after one week they change the mind, change uh, uh, the uh, 
some style of uh, connecting between each other and they start to plan some different uh, another uh, travelers or some spend some weekend together etc yeah that's fascinating so frank I, I i i'd imagine based on what i'm hearing that this could be a new way of remote work is like travel and work and you yeah. know go to destinations together you can work Ooh. from anywhere in the world right now and listen <laughs> destination <laughs> work relationships places. yes because <laughs> yeah because i mean you're right like vulnerability-based trust is yes. something that we've seen has been an unbelievable asset to building high-performing teams like when, when we're talking about building workplaces that thrive that are resilient vulnerability is really the key and i think that's fascinating muhammad the idea <laughs> of remote work literally yeah. remote you know <laughs> And, and being able to, to go in the bubbles and travel and also get work done and kind of hybridize that a little bit. The flexibility is really interesting. And a lot of companies are starting to embrace this, this idea. There was actually an article today that I read in the New York Times that was all about the realities of um, in, in office work environments has, have actually not been shown to be more innovative mm -hmm. and in some ways are actually dampening innovation. And for, for you know businesses, having the flexibility to do things like that, but also getting creative with it. I mean, yeah. for organizations that are really trying to build high performance, this is a really unique opportunity. I, I also mm -hmm. think um, cultural competency, like, if, you know, there's such a big emphasis on diversity and inclusion. What better way to gain empathy and cultural competency than to send a team abroad, hey, go work together, build trust, but also learn, you know, about other cultures and, uh, you know, competencies on other cultural differences and integrations and come back and bring your experiences back to the rest of the team. I think that'd be amazing if we could use those kind of strategies to build more cultural competency for teams. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And for companies, it also has a lot of benefits because, for example, instead of uh, having an office in a big city, uh, and which costs really a lot, uh, you can just travel with your remote team to some country, which is, I don't know, cheaper and have, I mean, have same costs, but people are much more, uh, I don't know, motivated, much more passionate about their work because they just connect traveling and working at the same time. They don't need to choose between both of these uh, activities. I'm I'm sold. We need to create. We're all going to Turkey. That's the surprise. We're all going to Istanbul. Um, that's amazing. It, I'm actually I'm very interested to know, um, uh, and a little bit I think from both of you would be great to to know a little bit more about um, how you've been able to get these these travel experts um, into your platform and and being able to offer their experiences and and. I'm interested to know a little bit more about how you are able to build and sustain a culture that creates this connection between all of these travelers and these travel experts having similar experiences. Uh, what has your intention been around building a, a culture at utravel.me that allows for all of these groups of people to create the best customer experience? Yeah. So let me, let me try to start with, with the answer. Please. So, um, so first of all, when we started, we understood that the core element of building a really, really a social platform in group touring and in multi-day touring is to build a direct communication between our users on the platform. Uh, that's why from the very first day uh, when we launched, we had the chat options, uh, which was later um, added, I mean, which uh, we have, uh, later also uh, improved into also voice communication. So uh, the most important thing is that people, when they travel for seven days in a small group, they want to, to get to know the people in advance. So they need to talk directly. It's not the same as like buying a ticket, uh, like an air ticket when uh, you need to spend with these people three hours here we spent with them one week so we want to learn to know them better that's why uh, we have started to build uh, our own communication system where people can talk to each other uh, and everything is still secure and safe and made through our platform 
Um, and that's how um, connecting people on the platform, uh, a lot of them have started to, I don't know, sh- share the same vision. We have created the community of travel experts, mm. uh, like the one which is uh, which is closed only for the verified travel expert on our platform. And we understood how much this uh, independent guides, they want to communicate uh, with each other before they were like competing. And okay. uh, and now they they are in the same communication system, and they they started to actually share their insights, sharing. I mean, asking each other, how are you guys working with these groups? How are you guys doing? I don't know this. So um, this was the second stage, like creating the community of these travel experts uh, who started to follow our uh, platform. But the third uh, thing has actually become. Um, I mean, has appeared for us because of the pandemic. When our sales have stopped, when the pandemic was announced uh, and we had all these returns and refunds and we had a team and we didn't know how to pay them. We didn't have money for that being a startup. We have launched our own um online school for travel experts which we, which was called be guide where we have uh, gathered the top knowledge of our 10 best travel experts from the platform they have created a 50 hours online course on how to start uh, creating small group tours and through this instrument uh, like educating our travel experts with this online course also all our values, uh, which which we're trying to basically um, uh, to, to 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 send to people, it was really easy for us to uh, make them know all the um, values that we want them to to have and that we expect from their site. So the online school also was was the key to to this part. Yeah, yeah and it's about creation economy because travel expert could be. Uh, everybody if you want to organize your multi-day small group tours uh you can do it and you can start to work on this you can understand what you need to do uh we work just with uh, proven travel experts we check uh, and verify all this stuff but uh it's not about us it's about travel experts uh we launch this big guide um uh education and we understood there is no such information such uh, uh really for now we have more than 100 uh, hours of uh, different webinars and uh, uh different information and uh, we understood that they don't have this information at, at uh, direct um um they can't it can't find it in internet so uh they just came to us and they said, wow, it's really great. Wow, I can work. Oh, how how I can be guide if I am a woman? It was difficult. It's really difficult for me. And we have, okay, you, you see this uh, video and you understood. We have some life hacks and we, we already have some women's uh, like a guide and they they can organize it's really great and uh, all this stuff we uh, uh, check and uh, they really help um, help us to understand that this information is what for travel experts and on our platform every travel expert has access to this ba- uh, database so they can um, improve their uh, service every day and for us it's just uh, like uh, one more thing that we think, okay, we change this world. Yeah, we can make this service better every day. Nice. That's fascinating. So you started by creating a communication tool for travelers. And then yeah. you made yeah. you you helped transform all of these travel experts from enemies into friends yeah. by giving yeah. them a yeah. chance Correct. to learn from each other. And then in when the pandemic hit, you pivoted as a company to a new business model to offer mm-hmm. up tools for people to learn by utilizing some of the expertise from your top travelers in order to continue to function as a company, to continue to move forward and to, to also create educational resources that had never been seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. That's a, it's an amazing, amazing approach. Um, 
and and very cool to see how you were able to pivot in something like the pandemic. Yeah, it was really surprising for us uh, that we have managed to really pivot fast in like two months. I mean, in May, we had already our first 50 students on the online course uh, that really helped us to to survive during this yeah. tough time for the travel industry. So May of 2020. So within a few months of the actual global lockdowns, you had already crafted this platform and had already had students enrolled. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So we have launched our first uh, first uh, batch uh, mm -hmm. on like 5th of May. I mean, one, one month it took for us to craft the course. I mean, first two weeks we were like, oh my God, what's happening we need what's to going on business what's going on yeah. Yeah. the first two weeks were like that but the next four we were like we understood that this can be this can save us basically and uh, we started hard to to work on that yeah we found that these travel experts are they are lonely because they're not an agency they're not tour operators big group of people who organize all these big tours they are lonely travel experts in some country they have a lot of refunds and the it uh, he or she feels like oh my god what should i do oh my god i'm lonely in this world and uh, when uh, we show them you are not alone you you just uh, look, uh, there is 3,000 travel experts like you in the same position, in the same situation with refund, and the same uh, situation with COVID at, at the same total situation. And uh, they understood, okay, we are not enemy anymore. <laughs> we are friends. Nice. So, um, Olga and Ivan, the travel industry, as we just alluded to, had some major financial impacts this past year due to the pandemic. As things start opening up, businesses start traveling, people start traveling for leisure. What's something that you would want people to, to do or think about as they start interfacing with the hospitality industry again? It's been, again, a whirlwind for everyone, um, financial and economic impacts. Um, but what's, what's a piece of advice or a tip that you want to you know, give listeners to think about when it comes to interfacing with? with their various hotel staff and, and airlines, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great question that uh, everybody is, uh, I mean, even way we ask ourselves when we have our next trip. So first of all, it's, I mean, we have actually created recently like top 12 uh, things you need to check uh, when you travel in COVID times. So I would say that the most important ones from my side are first of all to check um, the restrictions on a daily basis um, in the country you are visiting or in the country that you're uh, returning to because we have ourselves recently had a situation when we have actually in March traveled uh, mm -hmm. from Georgia uh, as a country or Georgia not the state uh, to Turkey uh, and then back um in two weeks and during these two weeks the restrictions have changed already but we were so um uh, so confident that we we know already how to travel now to turkey because we have just came from there but and we didn't check that uh in two weeks it has changed uh that that has resulted uh really big stress uh, in the airport with one more paper we need to fill in on the Turkish uh, government website, which was just launched the day before and it wasn't working properly and so on. So the first one is to, to check carefully and recheck and, and yeah, second, uh, I would say that still it is important to, to be, um, to have a human approach uh, to your tour providers to your travel companies because uh, still it's very difficult for these guys to provide the same le level of service that they used to provide before the pandemic uh, because of the economic situation because some processes they they have lost them uh, during this time so being still tolerant being still um, really understanding that they are humans and they 
it's it's difficult for them. You all know that at the moment it's a big problem in the U.S. with the car rentals and. I saw in social media some really angry comments about that, and I understand people, but I just want to motivate people to understand all these rental companies. They had tough time. They, they are not ready. Um, and yeah, and the third one is to, um, to try to go with professionals because um, at the moment you need to, how to say, Mm, it's it's good to trust your uh, next um, trip um, uh, to some professional or like tour guide or somebody else because a lot of things uh, they are still closed. Uh, some routes have changed, and in most cases, most of the cases, you just cannot find all this information in the internet in advance. Uh, so. And these local people, they know it already. Uh, so at the moment in 2021, I would advise it if you want, like Chris, always a uh, top quality of your trip, always top uh, uh, experiences. Uh, yeah, it's important exactly now to, uh, to trust travel professionals about that. So yeah. Yeah, it's now, it's now it's moment of changing. Uh, after COVID, you can try everything you can try any any uh country that's uh if you have vaccinated uh you you can yeah you can travel ev most probably everywhere but uh, it's time to try some new approaches i mean if you never uh tr travel with a group try it maybe you will like it because now travel industry is totally changing and uh our company is um uh, is uh, one thing that's become uh, uh, grow faster in this time because people people understood okay we can travel in small groups why not and they understood that it's really great um, a way to travel and uh, you try to travel with uh, some experienced people yeah really I'm understood with uh, professional because uh, travel industry is uh, will change in more faster if uh, people will use it. And um, uh, for now, travel experts, they really want to work harder because of COVID and because of this of all this situation. And if people uh, will back to like normal, not normal, new normal, uh, it will be, um, yeah, it will be good for travel industry. It, 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 um, it, it, it all. <laughs> yeah, no, I <clears throat> completely agree. I know a couple of years ago, I was traveling for work with um, a previous manager and she was like, oh, do you have a tip for um, for the cleaning crew? I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, no, I don't, I don't have any cash. And she's like, oh, I always leave a tip for the the, the crew that is cleaning the room. Um, and she explained some of the backstory because, like, up until that point, to be honest and completely, you know, vulnerable, like all of those folks were invisible to me because it was just like, yeah, you get your room clean, da da da. da. Um, and she was explaining like some of the stories of like, hey, most of these, you know, individuals are women, um, especially at least in the West, mm -hmm. um, who are cleaning rooms, um, and many of them are in a lower socioeconomic status and you know have different. Um, hardships that are not always you know seen or known and so those you know tips that you leave you know can go a really long way and so ever since that day when my eyes were enlightened i always make sure that i don't leave my country without tips for the hotel staff because it is important that they sort of be seen um, and they do make the experience that much better. Like, and it's, again, it's easy to miss. Um, I know I missed it, um, but it's just something that ever since then, I'm like, it's ingratiated in me that like, oh, you got to do it. Like, no, 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 it's not an option. And I, I can tell you, Chris has also influenced us in the same mm -hmm. way. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So since he told me that story now, even I leave tips. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's like something that I don't think I had even thought about from that lens for sure. It's it's true. And, it, and you know, like when we, we recently traveled with my, my kids just to a city in Texas, but 
I purposefully brought cash to leave in the hotel room. And, and my son was like, dad, you left that money on the table, you know? And I was like, well, I, it's not for you unless you're going to clean the entire hotel room, you know? And it was great. It was a great learning experience as well to understand um, the value and to, and like you said, Chris, to make sure that people are seen. Uh, but this has been, this has been very fascinating. Like I've, I've very much enjoyed our conversation around the tool that you've built from the pain that you experienced traveling um, when you, when you felt, like, I don't want anyone else to experience this thing, right? Like, I, I, I want to make sure that the people that are traveling, that are wanting to experience the world, that are wanting to learn new cultures, new and, and see things for the first time that they've never seen before, to have the best possible experience, right? And so, I love that your story is born out of frustration because that's when all that's where where all great things start from, right? Is this need to innovate, this need to make something better, and. I'm very much a, a huge fan of the fact that humanity is such a foundational component of your business, that you are fully designed around making sure that human connection is what drives your business with the travel experts connecting with the travelers, with the way you're running your organization culturally, making sure that you can, you can empower people to do the right thing. And I also love the fact that, you know, in talking about travel, you're, you're showcasing new ways that businesses and organizations can be creative about building trust, about getting work done together on safaris. I mean, if we're going on a safari with Chris, it may be a little out of my price range. I don't know, maybe. But I think it's very interesting to see that there's so much opportunity. Olga, you mentioned this a few moments ago, that if you're vaccinated, try it. Go do it. Like You can travel. There's opportunity right now. And it's so interesting to me how there's such a connection with our workplace and learning and growing and experiencing cultures and the travel side of things and learning and experiencing cultures at those places and how much they're intertwined. So I wanna, before we close, I wanna say thank you uh, to both Olga and Ivan. And is there any last thoughts that you had for our listeners today, our watchers today before we before we close out? Yeah, I just wanted also to to share that uh, we really believe that traveling can also um, can not just uh, change your own life, but can also change the life uh, lives of other people. And what you just mentioned with the hotel example, uh, that traveling you can help local communities, uh, local people, uh, bringing the I mean, bringing money to their economics, uh, bringing yourself, your thoughts and um, like different mindsets to their lives is, is very important. And I believe that um, travel can responsibly, uh, traveling responsibly and sustainably can also change a lot of things. So that that's why uh, I think it's very important to go back to traveling and uh, and yeah and try to to make the people more loving and more uh, human. human. I love it. Yeah. Olga? Yeah. Yeah, I want to add uh, that uh, Vanya said about uh, people around you. I, I want to uh, say about you as a traveler. Uh, when you want to change your life, when you feel sad or lonely, uh, traveling is uh, like a protest, like uh, all these small group tours can change your life just in one week or in two weeks. And if you feel some depression or you feel sad or you feel like, okay, I don't know to do, what to do, you just just uh, buy a ticket, just go, go first go vaccinated, buy tickets and uh, try to feel these emotions and try to be open to the world and to other people. And you, when you uh, come back, you feel really better. I, re I read a lot of our reviews and I know that people really change their lives and it's, mm. it's great. That's amazing. Yeah, like, honestly, you've sold all of us. So we're going <laughs> to, we're going to be planning something, but uh, thank you both so much for joining us today. And as always, thank you to our listeners. So please be sure to check out our book. It's available on Amazon everywhere. The books are sold and you know, the book is titled, the same as our podcast, Love as a Business Strategy. So for more information, for free resources, you can also check out the website, lovesabusinessstrategy.com. And if you're ready to travel, youtravel.me. 
We've talked a lot about it. Go look at their incredible stuff that they've got on there. It's amazing to see all of the different experiences people can go through. It's utravel.me. Here at Loves of Business Strategy, we're posting new episodes every Wednesday. Is there a business topic that you'd love to have us cover? Let us know at softway.com slash L-A-A-B-S. And if you liked what you heard today, as always, please do leave us a five-star review and subscribe on Apple and Spotify. It helps other listeners find our content. And if you know someone who might enjoy this stuff, don't forget to share the love as a business strategy, pun intended. So thank you again for our guests today, and we will see you all next week.